This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is not just the NFL that dominates storylines on Thanksgiving week because we got a massive, massive slate of college football coming up and also World Cup matches underway. We're going to talk to the guy who was low on Argentina coming into this year. Dr. Ed Fang, get his read on the opening couple of matches in the World Cup and break down to college football week number 13 right now. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Dr. Ed Feng. Find Ed's work over at thepowerrank.com, and you want to do that because Ed, as mentioned, was low on Argentina. We talked last week, and he said, hey, Argentina, a bit overrated. I want to bet Poland and Mexico, uh, both those teams, plus 490 to win Group C. And Ed, looking pretty good so far. How are you feeling? I'm feeling all right. I mean, when I woke up and I saw that Saudi Arabia had beaten Argentina, I was pretty pumped. It was, uh, you know, they, they in no way dominated that match. I think in some places I saw that Saudi Arabia had 0.1 expected mm-hmm. goals, uh, yet they bagged two, and that was enough to pull off a pretty shocking upset. Uh, clearly, Argentina is a better team than Saudi Arabia. Argentina is the best team in, in that group, okay? But I just thought they were overrated in the markets. I still believe that to be true. What's interesting is that uh, FanDuel actually moved pretty hard against me on mm-hmm. on those two bets from Mexico and um, Poland. I mean, you could have gotten those plus 550 uh, as of when I sent my newsletter out Saturday. Um, I still think Argentina is a little – I still think Argentina is overrated. Yeah. Poland and Mexico look pretty wretched the last 20 minutes of that match that I just saw not too long ago. I was not impressed by, by either team. Honestly f- – if either of those teams wins, I'm in a really good spot. And then yeah. now I'm now I'm realizing like yeah, I'm not in the best spot now that they tied. So, I mean, still better than than I was at the, at the beginning of the day, for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll just show you how random soccer is, and uh, you know, there's still a little bit of luck in 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 Argentina losing to Saudi Arabia. That shouldn't happen. And we'll talk more about that. We'll talk about the U.S. opening match and uh, broad takeaways in the World Cup and then also break down College Football Week 13 throughout the course of today. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Our Week 12 NFL show will be out tomorrow with Ryan Williams. Uh, we'll break down what my numbers say about this week, other big games. We'll talk some Thanksgiving games uh, and more all on the cover in the spread feed and also up on the FanDuel YouTube page after that. So subscribe, whether it be the FanDuel YouTube page or the cover in the spread podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. Football fans, make this a Thanksgiving to remember with FanDuel America's number one sports book because now when you bet an NFL same game parlay, now through November 28th, all customers can get up to $1,000 in free bets win or lose. Just bet an NFL same game parlay or same game parlay plus of at least $20. The bigger you bet, the more you'll get back in free bets. NFL same game parlays are the perfect way to combine your bets for a chance at a larger payday. Build your own or choose from one of the popular SGPs pre-built for you in Vandal's top rated sportsbook app. However you want to play, get up to $1,000 in free bets, win or lose. When you bet in NFL, same game parlay of four leg or more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus in select states. First uh, bonus issued is non withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max free bet $100. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chad. In Kansas and Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. And in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789 or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig more into the World Cup and talk about what we've seen here from the early couple of matches. Just a couple of days in the books. We saw the U.S. playing. We saw that Argentina loss. Ed, when you look at what we've seen so far from the World Cup, what are the big takeaways for you? I thought the... 
I, th- I thought you could have a lot of optimism and yet a lot of pessimism over the U.S. team. I personally thought they outplayed Wales, had a world-class goal by uh, Tim Way in the first half. Wales had a couple opportunities in the second half, so the XG was kind of equal. Um, actually, equal. You have to you have to k- kind of uh, take away the the penalty kick. Yeah, because uh, the U.S. made a bad mistake. You know, it was it was just a dumb tackle in the box, and and uh, yeah, so you they gave away the penalty kick. Wales converts it. They get a tie. I don't know. I mean, I thought. I mean, I thought the U.S. played pretty well. Uh, the reason for pessimism is because Brendan Aronson didn't get on until the 60th minute, and I think he's one of the top three players on the team. Gio Reyna didn't even get off the bench, and he might be the best player America produces ever. I think he's got that kind of potential. So it's really disappointing those two things. And then the other reason is, I mean, England just looked completely dominant. Uh, in in every facet of the game, uh, they played Iran, and I've been kind of talking up Iran as probably one of the one of the better. Maybe I mean they they are the second best worst team in a in a group. They're like thirty second in my numbers. They're not bad. They have a a, a guy Taremi that that plays in Portugal for for a Champions League level team and is their top goal scorer. Uh, England completely dominated, so that's obviously not good for the U.S. And England dominated in a way that I, I personally have never seen England dominate. Uh, they dominated possession. They did what top elite teams in the world should do to inferior opponents. Uh, they they played a type of possession style game that this is the kind of thing that the U.S. can do to you know maybe a lower level Central American team, but they have no prayer of doing it against the Germany. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, England looked impressive. They are about two, two and three to, to win against a little bit less than two and three to win against the U S in that next match, which is obviously not good. Um, you know, us probably going to need some breaks, but, but they did play well. So I, I do have a little bit of hope there and it all goes down Friday at 2 PM. Yeah, uh, the uh, England win is minus 180 right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The U.S. 5-1 to one to win, and the draw is plus 300 in that game. Looking at the uh, group number, or group B, or group C, I should say, the Argentina group. Right now, Argentina plus 160. Saudi Arabia is down to plus 250 because they got that win in the books. Obviously, that matters a lot. Uh, you got Mexico plus 350, Poland plus 350. So a lot more wide open now. And I think it cut, yeah. kind of backs up what you said earlier, where... The draw for those two didn't help you as much as you, you might have thought. And you said it didn't look that good either, which doesn't hurt. But uh, any read for you on that group, given what we saw this morning? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I need either Mexico or Poland to play a lot better than they did today. <laughs> I and mean, that that that's kind of what it what it comes down to. Robert Lewandowski, Poland's best. I mean, one of the best goal scorers in the world missed the penalty kick uh, today. That obviously would have helped a lot. You know, I just, I didn't need, <laughs> I didn't care which team won. I just needed yeah. one of them to win. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so it's a little disappointing that 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 didn't happen. I think Saudi Arabia is going to regress to to what they are, which is not, you know, one of the weaker teams sure. in the World Cup. You know, Poland should be able to put them away in that next match. And, and we'll see what Mexico can do against Argentina. I mean, they're pretty big, pretty big underdogs. Um, so we'll see. Do you think that Mexico's shots of contending against Argentina increased based on Argentina, you know, being confirmed as being in line with your priors or did the disappointment in that match with Poland nullify any gains you may have had from the Argentina loss? I mean, it's hard for me to tell from the markets just because I can't really compare where the markets thought of Argentina before and after that game. The smart thing is to not really adjust at all. Yeah, given given the way that game turned out, I mean, it was it, it was pretty lopsided. Argentina yeah. should have won that game. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I would I would guess the market is pretty close to its prior. It yeah. still seems uh, significantly more in favor of Argentina than what my numbers say. Um, and Argentina is better than Mexico. Sure. So we need we need a little bit. You know, the. <laughs> Mexico needs to bring their A game and get some breaks. Yeah, well, we'll certainly see how things play out uh, as we go forward. But uh, good to get that uh, confirmation that your numbers are on the right path. I know you don't need that confirmation. You've been doing this for a long time and have a, a lot of thought process behind your numbers. But never hurts to get a good confirmation in your in your favor uh, right away. Let's talk now about some college football because we have massive games. And Ed, you're in Ann Arbor. So let's start things off with the game. We got Michigan at Ohio State. Ohio State right now, seven and a half point favorite at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total for this game is 56 and a half. Michigan got a big scare this past week. But hey, 
they stayed alive. And this game is still big. Uh, a shot, obviously, that the loser could still go to the playoff, but pretty big game here. Can Michigan keep this game close and potentially maybe even win? Uh, can they cover a seven and a half point spread? What's your read on this game? I mean, they certainly need to keep it close. Yeah. Uh, my numbers have me this exactly at seven. I believe seven is essentially the right number. I think I think there were eights when this opened on Sunday and it's been coming down. I wouldn't be surprised if it closes at seven. So don't really see any value in the spread. Look, I mean, Ohio State also had a stick air this past weekend. They were only up three late at Maryland in a game that they were pretty huge favorites. And and I would, yeah, you know, Michigan had a scare, but Illinois has been the best defense in college football by my adjusted success rate. Like that is a legitimate unit. They were able, I mean, they 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 just decided that Michigan wasn't allowed to run the ball and, and they put a lot of guys in the box and then Blake Quorum gets hurt and the backup running back from Michigan wasn't around and a couple other weapons were missing as well. Yeah, I mean, that's that's going to happen. So when Michigan goes down to Ohio State, I think, you know, this Ohio State defense has been really good. Their, their third, when I look at adjusted success rate, this is a pretty big surprise for a unit that struggled last year. A lot of credit clearly has to go to uh, defensive coordinator Jim Knowles, who came over from Oklahoma State. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think Michigan can keep it close. Um, you know, their defense is, is probably going to be the worst unit on the field, but still a good unit, 22nd in my adjusted success rate. So I think Blake Horn plays. I think he could have played in the second half against Illinois, but they wanted to take the precaution. He's going to play in this game. Is Michigan going to be, going to be able to run the ball? I don't know. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, Ohio State's going to try to stop that. So uh, Michigan's going to have to be able to throw – as well um yeah it'll be interesting i mean obviously it's better for the big 10 if ohio state loses so uh they have they probably have the better argument of making it as a right. one loss uh one loss team that doesn't make their conference championship game yeah they, they certainly do and uh, like you said they have to keep things close michigan does regardless um but we'll see how that one plays out but fun game uh second consecutive year it's gonna be a delight to watch that one i love they have it in the early window too kind of opens you up for the afternoon to yep. watch some other games in the evening so looking forward to that one for sure let's talk about another team in the playoff race in it right now iowa state at tcu tcu this spread is down to nine and a half right now so it is cross 10 tcu uh, got by by the skin of their teeth this past weekend. I had horrible flashbacks to Drew Henson sliding to get the the place kicked down in that game against Northwestern at the end of the regulation for Michigan a couple years ago. Just burned into my brain. It was like three hours in the rain just to watch them lose in triple overtime on a Jake Butt touchdown. But TCU uh, does win. They stay undefeated. They got to win here, though, because they've had a lot of really close games. Tough schedule, obviously, but a, a lot of close games for TCU. Can they cover against Iowa State? A very good defense and, uh, you know, impress the committee once again this week? I mean, they should be able to. I mean, my numbers have this at, at almost 11 points. Uh, didn't much see much value at 10.5, but maybe a little bit more interesting at 9.5. These two teams are interesting in that TCU is 5-0 and in one-score games, and that's certainly been part of the narrative of why they kind of don't necessarily deserve to be in the playoff race. Uh, you know, they've been down, come back, uh, won some nail biters. Iowa State is one and six in one score games, which, you know, they're a better team probably than their four and seven uh, record overall suggests. I, I ran some numbers, uh, you know, like given the win probability in this game, given that TCU is most likely playing Kansas State next week, and my numbers will put that as essentially a toss up at a neutral site. When you work those two things together, TCU has a 40% chance of winning those two games. So less than 50 50. Um, so 60% chance that they they actually fall out one, one of these two weeks. Uh, I think that's about right. So, yeah, I mean, they've been playing well. Um, they probably win this one. More likely they lose against Kansas State. Um, this total seems pretty low to me 47 and a half. Uh, I like the over. My numbers have it this in the 50s. Um, I mean, I had I had the over in, in TCU at Texas, which was an embarrassment. Um, and they clearly went over last week. But uh, my numbers do like the over, and I think that that's the right side on on that. 
Yeah, total rate, as you said, 47 and a half right now for that one. Uh, with it at nine and a half, are you confident enough to bet it at nine and a half? Or are you keeping an eye on the market to see if you can get a better number as it moves? Do you want more value there? What's your read on that side? I don't know. I, I can't see this getting lower than nine and a half. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I just probably stay away. I think that's that's pretty efficient right there. I mean, somewhere near 10. Okay, but we do like the total uh, over 47 and a half. Let's move now to the other game, that the other team that's watching TCU, watching Michigan close. That is Notre Dame at USC, where this spread has come down to. USC is now a four and a half point favorite. Total is 63 and a half. And Notre Dame playing better of late, got that Clemson win. They've had some convincing wins against lesser teams as well. Can they spin an upset here and uh, keep a rival out of the playoffs? Absolutely. They can definitely upset USC. My numbers are giving that about 38% chance. And I'm a little uh, I'm a little pissed that Caleb Williams has now become the Heisman front runner. I thought <laughs> I had everything, everything awesome with a ticket on Stroud and, and a ticket on Blake Quorum. And he is screwing everything up. And it's not really his fault either. Right. It's that absolute joke of a defense of UCLA last week that just allowed I mean USC's defense too just just a yeah. complete complete lack of any type of confidence on that side of the ball and USC really got away with one last week right like they actually got stopped um and UCLA had the ball down three with two minutes to go I certainly expected UCLA to just march down the field and either tie or win that game USC gets a pick um, so really, really a lot of things could have ended right there last week. Notre Dame, you know, since, uh, Drew Pine has taken over, they've won five in a row and eight of nine games, including obviously a big one against Clemson. Uh, you know, the numbers look pretty good. I mean, they're 20th in my adjusted success rate on offense, 29th overall. This is over the course of the season, but the majority of that is is going to be drew pine they are going against an absolute joke of a defense and honestly i mean it just goes you as much as i will tell you how sticky success rate is compared to other metrics it had usc as a pretty good defense at one point this season which has turned out to to not be the case at all so yeah i don't know i mean uh you know this this was usc by six on sunday it's down to four and a half my numbers have it by four i think the market is pretty spot on here uh i think the total is pretty spot on here i have it right at 63 as well and uh it should be a fun one i i, I presume this is in the night window so this this will be a fun fun late game and and yeah notre dame get, gets a break or two they can absolutely win this game yeah uh 7 30 kickoff for this game um you mentioned the uh, win outs to Notre Dame, you said uh, 38%. Their money line right now, plus 158, which is 38.8%. So it seems like everything is in line with your numbers for this week, which, again, that's feel good. It's annoying to not get some bets down, but like, yeah, kind of feel good to get the confirmation from the market that you're on the, the right side here. Yeah. I mean, there's a time, usually like a week 11, week 12, it's like pretty in line with where everything yeah. opens up and stays. And um, yeah, it's just hard to find value late in the year. I had stacked USC UCLA for college football DFS last week. So I was very okay there with the go. defenses just not showing up. Um, oh it was just, I mean, it was that second half was just unbelievable. Perfect. I mean, I, it, was I fun. it was perfect. It was fun, but like at some point, you're just like, I mean, is anyone going to play defense? Yeah, I was okay with them not doing it personally. No objections. <laughs> perfect game. No notes. I'm, I'm all good with that. But, Honestly, you get the Michigan Ohio State game to start. Uh, yep. Iowa State TCU, I believe, is in the afternoon as well. So that's it's at four o'clock. So that's right after the game, effectively. Like that's a that's a good day of football lined up head to toe. Yeah, and you can start. I presume that the first World Cup game is like five a.m. Eastern time that morning. So you go five a.m. until ten. I don't think I'm built at for least. that, Ed. I'm at not least. built for that. I'm not built for that. You might be. Uh, kudos no, to you if you are, I'm but I'm, I'm I'm not hanging with that anymore. I'm not that cool. <laughs> all righty. That is all that we have here for the college football and World Cup edition of this show for this week. But, Ed, you know, uh, I, I think that we're feeling pretty good about things so far on the World Cup side of things. If people want to check out your numbers for the World Cup, check out your college football stuff, where can they find all your work? Yeah, check it out at thepowerrank.com. The best way is to sign up for the free email newsletter uh, try to talk about bets I make and, and why I make them. Uh, I also produce seven nuggets Saturday, which is curated list of sports betting tips 
and news and a little bit of humor. So check that out at thepowerrank.com. And then if if you go on like if you go on the World Cup rankings and there's a mm-hmm. link to like all my predictions, um, I'll post a second set of games pretty soon. So you can check out all that stuff there and obviously all my football, college, and NFL as well. All right. And you can find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. Back with you once again tomorrow for our NFL Week 12 breakdown with Ryan Williams. We'll get you set for Thanksgiving and for the Sunday games as well. But going to be a delightful stretch of sports here in the next uh, week or so. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 